Good afternoon. How are you? आप आगे आइए ना आपको बिजनेस क्लास अपग्रेड कर रहे हैं आप आइए ना सो यू आर हियर फॉर अ गुड रीजन आई टॉक टू सम ऑफ यू टेल मी जी आप लोग सब साइंटिस्ट और इंजीनियर्स हैं है कि नहीं यस यू आर साइंटिस्ट टू राइट या इन साइंस नेवर से इट गोस अप इट कम्स डाउन यू डोंट से दैट द वेट गोस अप नो आई से द वेट गोस अप फ्रॉम सिक्सटी के जी टू सेवेंटी फाइव के जी एंड देन इट कम्स डाउन सेवेंटी फाइव टू सेवेंटी के जी यू नो and i don't say it's a dramatic increase from 60 to 70 kg i just say 60 to 70 is for you to decide whether it is dramatic samjhe na so we can't put subjectivity in our so we are not doing drama we are just being objective that is very very important in science technology and engineering and i feel that is the definition we also need for innovation just because i came up with this fantastic car and it's called bmw and it cost 2.5 crore is that innovation even enough money so like my grandmother used to say enough shakkar dalo everything will taste good so same with the technology na put enough money in it it will be great what is the criteria for something to be innovative Huh? Economic, affordability, appropriate. Or if you are trying to make a BMW better in terms of gas mileage, yes. One of the things about BMW, Mercedes Benz is you pay for their parts because you are paying for their technology. So that's okay. If you are gearing up, even there you want to be sure a BMW owner feels this is worth the money. Okay. what else is criteria for innovation if let's say you guys are going to a school see all these ideas comes when you are young and i almost think we tell people you see bachche log kaise hai na ye kaise chalta hai how does that work and then we kind of train them not to ask question then i feel very bad about that okay bachche log to mein jab innovative rehte hain so it's like i know thank you which one that yeah, both thank you so much i speak up a little bit of a nasal thing in you just like me you thank you thank you so much so it's like i remember one of our friends came in brought their 3 year old and he said something his mother said don't tell a lie you know what the three year old says mama what is a lie see itne bole you know they are so innocent na so think that you are going to a second grade school you are trying to teach him what is innovation kaise aap bataoge what will you say is a second grade or a third grade definition or description of what innovation is any idea aap log to soche honge iske bare mein because that's why you're here so what would you say and whenever i ask question na you can talk to your neighbor and discuss because 1 plus 1 is more than 2 so you can turn around So with that in mind if you come up it will be helpful. Okay, aap piche jaiye unke liye. Sorry about it. So that you have groups and other thing hai perfectly fine. So tell me for a third second grader definition or description of innovation kya bataoge aap? Okay. Okay. Keep going. Ask anete. No barriers, right? What else? Huh? Give them examples. Okay, but उन लोगों को innovation का meaning भी मालूम नहीं. 
तो पहले मीनिंग बताएंगे उनको तो क्या बताओगे आप थर्ड ग्रेडर को ओके 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 वॉट एल्स हाउ वुड यू डिस्क्राइब क्रिएटिविटी टू दैट थर्ड ग्रेडर वॉट इज क्रिएटिविटी Hmm? What do you think? What is creativity? Huh? Something? Something imagining. Okay. Anything else? Something novelty. Novelty. Okay. Something. Something that you have not seen before, right? You know what a dragon fruit is? नहीं ना गुड आई वॉज लुकिंग फॉर अ फ्रूट आप लोग तो ड्रैगन फ्रूट अभी यूरोप में बेचता है अगर मैं आपको ड्रैगन फ्रूट का आइसक्रीम दिया दैट विल बी नॉवल थी ना पर अगर मैं आपको वनीला आइसक्रीम यू विल से अरे इतना वे में वनीला आइसक्रीम का आया बट आइसक्रीम इज आइसक्रीम बट ड्रैगन फ्रूट आइसक्रीम इज नॉवल समथिंग पुट टुगेदर इन अ डिफरेंट वे लम टाइम्स इनोवेशन इज नॉट समथिंग न्यू इज समथिंग पुट टूगेदर डिफरेंटली आपने एक चीज बनाया इन्होंने दूसरा चीज बनाया एंड दिस जेंटलमैन कम्स एंड पुट्स इट टूगेदर इन ए यूनिक वे आपका टेक्नोलॉजी और इनका टेक्नोलॉजी दैट्स इनोवेशन टू सो इनोवेशन के लैब की जरूरत नहीं है इनका दोनों पब्लिकेशन पढ़ा पढ़ के ही कैन कम अप विद ए इनोवेटिव आइडिया लाइक आर एफ आई डी इज ए परफेक्ट एग्जाम्पल हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग आर एफ आई डी तो आप जानते हैं Who is from the food and agriculture sector? I was told there are two people here from food and agriculture sector. Anybody? Up here, na? So you know what the need of RFID is in food sector, na? So maybe you and you working together come come up with a better technology to use RFID RFID appropriately in that sector, na? So it's not that just because you know RFID, lot of times mistake happens because you bring a person who only knows RFID. but knows nothing about food and you don't give them any support for food and then say come up with something so for example in food process equipment hamesha pani nahi vaaprate us washing ke liye because water is bad microorganism will grow so you have to design equipment so that you can wash it with your hands rags and stuff but oh, engineer ko pata nahi to aise design to nahi karega wo samjhe na so this putting things together to come up with a better solution or application it's also innovation then i met two groups of people and i had challenged you with some ideas na and one of the group is who is i know that's who who was the who are the tata followers who talk to was it your group wo teen tata followers piche baithe the they are not part of the oh no wonder i gave the wrong audience sir okay, yeah okay good so ask them about it the question i love them is sometimes solution is not necessarily technological so the problem i gave that the group is they're going to tell us tell us tell me the group from barampur what was the problem i gave you then let them all think about it for two minutes then aap log to aadha ghanta time mila sochne ke liye and give me some solution so why don't you share with the group the problem i gave you which wanted to emphasize lot of time innovation is not necessarily technological it's just simply implementation if you can share with the group that'll be great ha huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, uh, this is the this is the problem where uh, we need uh, the solution. Yeah. Okay. So let people soak up the problem. You understood the problem, right? 
because I know based on queuing theory, if people don't switch lanes, the, line, the road will go much faster. And we have these beautiful highways, there's no traffic light, should go smoothly. But every time somebody comes here, stops, this car stops, this car stops, this car stops. And by the time this car starts, it doesn't, next car doesn't start right away, takes 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds so time based on that. And people, you know, sometimes I ask, why should Bombay Municipal Corporation waste pay in putting lanes, you know? Because, you know, it's almost like if there is a lane, hai isme, then I have to, you know, take it out. So I want to do a study, if Tata Center will fund it, will people not go too much this way and that way because they don't know where the lane is, you know. So again, tell me what some of the ideas that you have to make sure people go straight. Actually, those Tata fellows came up with one idea, then I said to them, come up with nine more ideas. That's, you know, so I basically left them with that, yeah. So any thoughts, ideas as to how to make it happen? Hmm? Any thoughts, ideas, how to make it happen? Hmm? Uh, sir, if we can control yeah. the speed of all the cars in the same range, yeah. then I what think they mean? can move. How do you see, because driver is in control, no? It will automation to be done. So, how do you give me some solution? I'm not saying it cannot be done. How do you control the speed of all the cars in the highway between in Adi Shankarajare Mark? How, how would you like uh, speed limit 40 to 50 around okay. that one? Okay. That uh, no car can go, okay. go. Uh, like okay. so put a speed faster limit. than that or, yeah, okay. or put a slower speed limit. than that. Okay. What else? By the way, no solution is a good solution, no solution is bad solution. It's all a solution. You know, you can pick and choose whatever you want, na? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Or, up, yep. Yeah. 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 Right. Fantastic, fantastic. Along Ahmedabad, mein, lorries can only come before 6 o'clock and lorries can come into town only after 10 p.m. So, fantastic idea. And also to give you another example, how many are from Mumbai? Nobody is from Mumbai, okay. You know there is this thing called an auto here, right? But where I live in Matunga, we don't allow auto. Autos nahi aate. The reason we did that is autos create part of the problem because the beach beach me gusse hain log. So we said no, no autos in Matunga. So people have to take a taxi or a car, but at least when you take a car or drive a car, you don't have the congestion because of all the autos here. Come up with some more ideas. <coughs> some ideas, yeah. In Pune, they have made for local bus. Ah. Uh, they have yeah. Uh -huh. Great idea. You know why? I always tell people, I still take train. You know why? I know when I will reach some place. I will reach there on time. So, train is there on a track. Why not create a track for bus so that you have a bus line? Fantastic idea. Similarly, you can do that for bikes too. And your idea of segregating is a fantastic idea. Make these two lanes for buses or one lane for bus, one lane for auto, one lane for bike. And that will be easy. But again, easier said than done. But somewhat viable. And what she said about speed limits, you can increase or decrease the speed limit in each of these lanes because buses speed limit will be slower, whereas autos will be higher. How about some ideas from the group here? Drastic ideas. Radical ideas. Uh, we can schedule the journey. Yeah. Uh, in such a manner that the mm -hmm. person, when he needs to change the lane, yeah. and when he needs to go straight. Okay. 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 How about if we give you a more drastic idea? The Google map will basically disable your car if you switch lane more than two times in 10 kilometers. It's possible. Very simple technology. I can find my phone someplace. People can actually 
with this electronic uh, gadgets, they can actually go into the car, but let's say I allow you, say if you want to use this lane, you have to subject yourself to some rules, and we can, it's kind of like saying, you know, you do something bad, you're going to kick you out of the class, kind of thing, right? So that's okay. So, but in general, you want to give people an incentive to do something right, than to say, I'll punish you. That, but punishment is the last resort and sometimes it's a good idea to put, it's like fine, you know, like police wale find their thing, aapke pas license nahi hai. So, it's also good. What else? One more idea I want to take before I go, talk about the food opportunities. Yep. Anything else? Yes. Yeah. Sir, it's not only about technology, <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you one more drastic one. Like in some of the parking lots in US, you can go forward, if you come back, your tire will get punctured. So why not do something like that if you keep switching the lane? Like let's say where you're not supposed to cross, if you cross the lane, that thing will puncture your tire. I like that. But you won't like it. You know why? Yeah. I know. And people in India are so creative. You know what they will do? The drivers, they will come up with a way to overcome that. So that's creativity here. Yeah? That's creativity. So what do you do? Who helps with computer security? Tell me. Who would you hire for computer security in your company? If you have a major network with some but so many passwords, who would you hire for computer security? Who do you think is best qualified to be a computer security person? Hacker. Right? So always I think of someone creative. You know why they do that? They're getting bored. Give them something constructive to do. So get a hacker, he will check your computer security so well, he will check it out and come up. Same here. Take those same people and say, hey, you know, and them going and talking. And, but another important thing is education. Now I see uh, some sort of a campaign going on for breastfeeding. Very good one. Very good one. Nicely put, beautifully done, telling people why breast milk is so much better than all these formulas. Yes, it's a little inconvenient, but you're dictating the entire future of a baby at that time. And breast milk gives you so many advantages in terms of the microflora, the health. The future of the child is determined by what you give to the child in the first six months. So they've done a beautiful job. So education also has to be done, either with technology or anything that we try to do, we have to educate the people. And I don't want to tell you if you don't do this, that's not the right way to do it. I need to first come and ask you, you must be doing this because there must be a reason. So let me understand the reason and then come up and work with you. So again, like I said, the social intervention is part of the thing. So now let's talk about some opportunities. So what I want to talk about is <coughs> in Tata Center, we do these kind of projects in the energy sector, healthcare. So I want to talk to you about how do we come up with innovative technologies. My mantra is, Value-added food processing. Let me talk about what do I mean by value-added food processing. So, you must have heard of this phrase, right? The bottom of the pyramid. Do you know what the phrase means? Did they talk about it in the morning? Okay, they did. So, the bottom of the pyramid is always bigger. The top is the CEO. These are all the workers, if you want to think it that way. But if you are thinking of consumers, the bottom, bottom of the pyramid is farmers and slightly above is the middle class consumers, right? Farmer gets what, 10 rupees a kilo or something for the tomato. When Kisan takes the tomato from 10 rupees, they make close to 120 to 240 rupees, right? Who actually created the tomato? Farmer. And sometimes what happens is, Kisan is overloaded. Farmer brings all the tomato. Kisan says, Aaj ka mara kota ho gaya. 
He doesn't even have the money to take it back. He just puts it in the road, right? Same thing with milk. There is excess production of milk. <coughs> Farmer doesn't have sometimes understanding of how much milk is needed. So I'm visiting my in-laws now. So the milkman always brings one extra pouch of milk. I'm leaving today, so my mother-in-law said, "Aaj nahi chahiye," and he gives me that gives my mother-in-law the sad look. Aapke liye me laya, you know. So we should communicate, na? So we need some prediction technologies for the farmer. So we can use computer technologies for prediction and stuff. But sometimes I think if a farmer can extend the shelf life of those tomatoes by five days by doing pre-cooling or something, that's also appropriate technology to add value. Then that's the farmer at the bottom of the economic pyramid. Then you have the <coughs> growing middle class. Forty years ago, people used to think it's a punishment to eat out in a hotel. अरे घर पे कोई नहीं है आपको पकाने के लिए नो नाउ इट हैज बिकम जस्ट यू आप सेट बट आई हैव नो प्रॉब्लम विथ ईटिंग आउट एज लॉन्ग एज यू ईट गुड फूड सात्विक फूड and food processing can help you make sattvic food and i can argue with you saying a processed food sometimes can be better nutritionally than a fresh food a fresh product like spinach comes to the local retailer travels from the retailer to the final home of the consumer temperature control nahi karte hai nutritional quality of the spinach by the time you cook it is not very good whereas i get the fresh spinach from the market i freeze it then i keep it until i'm ready to use that spinach has 20 times more nutrition than the spinach that has come through the fresh market so i don't agree necessarily fresh is always better but in the process of making the spinach i add too much salt too much oil that is bad too so nothing is good in general nothing is good bad in general but it all depends so value added food processing is an opportunity to increase the economic well being of the farmer value added food processing is also a big money maker for all these food companies that's why everybody is here in india mandalays general mills you know everybody because put together the india's middle market is as big as europe market is bigger than the consumer market in us okay so is an opportunity and any time you have questions feel feel free to ask i have no pressure to finish all the slides i want to have an interactive discussion with you for an hour and a half okay so basically you guys know this amul story right now i tell me why we created amul everybody is envious of amul harvard business school has seven cases on amul why you haven't been able to replicate amul in other commodities amul did it for dairy right why haven't we done that for spices why have we done that for fruits and vegetables in maharashtra why haven't we done something like that for other commodity crops what's your thinking <clears throat> why haven't we done this replication of this amul concept this cooperative concept for other crops any thoughts yes kaitri if i may add to what you said aptly one person that you think of that created amul who would that be who is the father of green revolution in india who is the father of green revolution in india yes you're right who is it ms swami nadan who came up with this beautiful varieties of wheat he was a former director general of the rice research institute in philippines and he came up with this beautiful varieties perfect for india who was responsible for the white revolution in india 
that white revolution refers to Amul. Who is the father of white revolution in India? Huh? Kuri. So in any of this concept, you need a product champion. So what Gayatri said was 100% right. But you think everybody was like perfectly fine on day one, day two. No, they were obstacles. But Korean said, okay, I will listen to you. Maybe I'll make a little bit of change here, change here, but we are still going ahead. So you need a good neta or a good product champion, I call it, to make these things happen. Without that, this novel new idea sometimes doesn't happen. Same with innovation, you need someone who doesn't take no for an answer. Because any innovative idea you have, you show him, he will say, ah, 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 ah. You show it to me and say, mm, you know, my body language will itself tell him, oh, I don't like it that much. Nine out of ten people you show your product idea, they're not going to be happy with it. Because you know why? Because it's new. I've never seen it that way. Meri mummy, I see mulli pila, ye dahi banati thi. Ye dahi to dusar ne. I don't want to even taste it. I don't want to even subject it to a taste because I'm already preconceived. It's not going to be good. That is the punishment you get for being innovative. But you are going to be innovator if you say, no, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'll come back next week. So innovation is a dedication and you never take no for an answer. Okay, so again, like I said, technical ideas are great, but we don't get credit for it until we implement it. And I always say this as a professor, publication is easy. But until I sell it to the company and company is able to use my idea and make money out of my idea, it's useless. I can always make everything work in a lab beautifully. Publication is so easy. Selling it to a company and helping them to make some money out of that technology is difficult, but that's more rewarding. Publication is so easy. But when you give it to a company and company says, I'm making saving $1 million in a year with your technology, then you realize that is of a higher order, higher challenge, and you sometimes need those particular things. Then you also know this ITC, each chaupal this is directed at the farmers. So ITC, you know ITC, right? I mean, they used to make gold flake and everything, then they decided, let's go into another food commodity other than tobacco leaves. They started working food processing. So one thing they do is, they make a lot of, they need a lot of atta, they need a lot of wheat for biscuits and stuff. So they started working with the farmers, vertical integration, teach them how to do it, give them all the help. Advantage kya hai unke liye? They have group of people who supplies good quality. But they also say, we'll give you information, but if you don't want to sell it to us, if it doesn't make money for you, you can sell it to somebody else. So with that, the farmer felt more secure with ITC because IT is not forcing them saying, I'll give you this access to my technology, my information, but then you have to only sell it to me. They didn't do that. So again, it's a win-win situation in this case. <coughs> so read up about each chapel. So it can be made to happen, but did it happen in one week, one day, one year? No. It took them about three years to make it accepted. Because first thing for karma said is, hey, to corporation hai. Humare balai ke liye nahi kar raha hai, un paisa banane ke liye kar raha hai. And the village people will, or serpent will always say that, don't trust because nine out of ten corporate people who came to help, didn't do anything. They said they will make me something, but they never come through. So the tenth one comes, even though it's the right person, your typical thinking is, oh my gosh, they're not going to do anything. So you have to persevere. You have to persevere and again, each Opal has gone into the next generation, generation two, generation three, and ITC doing great because the management said, we will make it work. That is the mantra you need to have when you are an innovator. Not that I have problems, I will make it work. If you don't have problems, chances are pretty good. Your idea is not innovative. It's like me telling my graduate students, Sab teek hua. The project is not good enough. Why am I having all this problem, Professor Ananteshwaran? 
because it's a difficult problem. If it was an easy problem, somebody would have done it before. So these are all the characteristics, but the rewards are well worth it at the end. So now let's talk about opportunities in the food sector. So when we talk about value added food processing, you're trying to increase the shelf life. What are the parameters that decrease the shelf life? You can have microbial growth. You can have enzymes in the food products, makes it bad. Or you can have interaction between light, milk, when you let it come in contact with visible light or especially the fluorescent lamps, the UV light destroys the vitamin. And then things, oxygen, if you have some fried products, if you keep it in contact with oxygen for about two weeks, it becomes rancid. So you have to package those products with no oxygen, put nitrogen, things of the kind. So the important parameters that you think of to improve shelf life is use the right ingredients in the product. Don't have ingredients that will go bad. Look at the fatty acid profile. Look at the way you process the product, the way you do the packaging, because you don't want a great product and package allows for moisture to come in, oxygen to come in. Then appropriate processing technology. Then another important thing is you made beautiful chocolate. You want to keep it in a refrigerated space. You don't want to leave it at room temperature because it will melt. So the storage condition is also very, very important. And then you want to make sure it goes all the way to the consumer homes and the consumer uses it. Your job is not done. You can't just say it left my factory perfect. The consumer doesn't get it right. Then I think he's going to complain and everybody will buy a new product the first time. You know your product is successful when the consumer comes back the second time to purchase the product. <coughs> <coughs> These are the principles of the technologies that we use for processed food product. One is called the physical methods, chemical methods, biological methods. Physical methods, we use temperature. We use heat to kill the microorganisms. We use heat to kill the enzymes. So all this conventional thermoprocessing, microwave thermoprocessing, which is also heating, are all under this. Or we can use non-thermal operation. You don't necessarily need heat sometimes to kill microorganisms. You can use irradiation, gamma irradiation, X-ray, electron beam. But the problem with those technologies is if you have meat products with a high amount of fat in it, high amount of irradiation will leave a bad flavor. That irradiation interacts with the flavor molecule, keeps off a bad taste. And again, there is a little bit of a perception problem with irradiation. Consumers think irradiation means the product I should not eat, which is not true. But consumer is always right, right? It's not true. So we have to educate the consumer about what the realities are. To me, irradiation is a very inexpensive technology. All potatoes, onions are great for irradiation so that they don't sprout and which is a staple crop here in Maharashtra. So again, consumer education is sometimes needed, though the technology is fantastic. Then there is a new technology that's being used in the last 15 years to kill microorganisms instead of using heat, instead of using irradiation. I use so high pressures, about 800,000 PSI, so the membranes of the microorganisms are destroyed so that they don't reproduce. Great technology. Orange juice processed with this technology tastes just like freshly squeezed orange juice. A orange juice that's pasteurized using time temperature will never taste like this. It's not like a fresh tube. It's like, you know, products which has been heated. It lose some of the flavor compound because in the heat, some of these flavor compounds kind of basically volatilizes. So high pressure processing is one of those. You can use ultrasound, high frequency. It will again kill the endoplasmic reticulum in the microorganism. You can also lower the temperature of the product or even freeze the product so microorganisms cannot reproduce. So these are all the technologies available. Or you can dry the food products because anything with a relative humidity or water activity about 0.8 microorganisms will grow but if the water activity or the relativity in the particular product is less than 0.8, like jams and jelly versus juice, 
Juice microorganisms can grow, jams and jelly, the water activity is below 0.76, nothing can grow except yeast and mold. So just simply concentrating the product is great, but sometimes when you concentrate, you still have water, you're paying to ship the water, you can completely dehydrate the product. This is how we sell milk sometimes, right? Milk powder. You can also get condensed milk, you can also get single strength milk, but you are selling or you're shipping all the water. Sometimes it's nice to be able to ship a product minus the water, so a lot more milk. And sometimes take the milk, you can reconstitute it to make milk. Chocolate industry uses this because a dried milk powder is safe, is easier to store than milk that comes directly from the farmer, farm a chocolate manufacturer. Finally, packaging by itself can increase the shelf life. You can take kotmili, kadipata, put it in the right package so that it doesn't dry out. It can be fresh for up to three weeks, four weeks to put the right amount of relative humidity, the right temperature, right oxygen concentration in that package. You don't need to do any processing. Just simply by adopting packaging, you can increase the shelf life of the food product. So these are all the physical methods. Then you have chemical methods where you add salt to a product or add sugar to the product, decrease the water activity. Or in meat products, which is not very common here, you add nitrites simply to make sure microorganisms cannot grow in these food products. Then there are finally the biological method, which we use a lot here in the dairy products. We make yogurt, microorganisms split, take up the particular, you know, the comp components of the milk, use it up, produce acid, lower the pH, and you're preserving milk. So again, yogurt is an example of where use a biological method to increase the shelf life of milk. Fruit juice, when you convert it into wine, the presence of alcohol produced by Saccharomyces cerevisiae increases the shelf life. Same with, you know, again, beer, where you take that particular hop and the wort and ferment it using the yeast and the organisms and then put the carbonation on top of it so the carbonation plus the, the little bit of that lower pH increases the shelf life. Then from a chemical engineering perspective, you take the product, raw material, subject it to different, different manufacturing operation to make a different product. Depending on how sophisticated the product is, it might have three operations or 30 operation, depending on the type of product. And some of the common chemical engineering operations used in the food industry are cleaning, sorting, size reduction, mixing, filtration, solid liquid extraction, crystallization, when you're making sugar, you can make sugar from, you know, lots of sugar solutions. Most of the food products have sugar in them and you can crystallize the sugar in it and find markets for it. Again, we talked about thermoprocessing, refrigeration, removal of heat, freezing, getting the product temperature close to about minus 18 degrees Celsius, you can do freezing, evaporation, which is concentration, or you can do dehydration to bring up dehydrated milk, dehydrated potato cubes, dehydrated vegetables, so that you can use it without having to ship all the water irradiation. Finally, if you're in the food industry, you use a lot of water, you generate a lot of waste, and that's a lot of money that's going down the drain. You want to kind of capture all the chemicals all the ingredients that is escaping, reuse the water because water is going to become a cook, kind of a difficult commodity for us to conserve and sustainability is very, very important. And a lot of places in California and lots of places, even in Maharashtra, this rainfall has become very erratic. So water conservation is very important. You can't waste a lot of water in these food processing operations. So again, this appropriate technology. You can do dehydration using tunnel dryers, crystallizers, not crystallizers, spray dryers. But sometimes if you're doing it at the farmer level, spray dryer is not the way to go. What you need is a passive solar dryer. Yes, it takes more time, but guess what? Farmer will accept this technology. You give him a spray dryer, there is no way that spray dryer will be working one year after you leave the farmer's farm. So again, you need that 
So the concept I'm using there is you need appropriate technology for every intervention that you're bringing in. So if I were to assume that we're going to help the bottom of the pyramid, the farmer is my customer, I need to think more of technologies like this. But if the consumers are my target, I'm helping General Mills, yes, I can use spray dryers, tunnel dryers, ultrasonic, sonification, things of that kind. So depending on who my client is, depending who my particular audience is in terms of product cost, you have to use appropriate technology. My only request is, don't use a lorry when you need a tempo, and when you need a tempo, please don't bring me a lorry. You understand? So technology is like that. We don't need a big wrench when all I need is a small wrench. So again, think, 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 don't get fascinated by technology. You know, to me, this particular phone I have is only useful because I get the data I want. I'm not addicted to this phone. I'm addicted to what this phone can do. You understand my point? Same with technology. We have a tendency to say, Dr. Anandishwaran, you said aseptic processing is the way to go. I told my company, they didn't take it. Why? The student forgot that aseptic processing is too costly. It's a great product it will generate, but it's going to add 10 more paise to the product cost. Consumer is not willing to pay for that. High pressure processing is the perfect example. The cost of the product is going to be twice. Will everybody pay twice for the fruit juice just because it's going to be aseptic come in? You know, high pressure processing? No, not really. Maybe if you're going to Taj, you're already used to paying 600 rupees for one papad, you'll pay maybe another 700 rupees for a glass of juice. But someone just going to a local stall, he's not going to pay 200, 300 rupees for a glass of juice just because it's high pressure process. So using the appropriate technology is very, very important from an engineering and science perspective. Any questions? Okay. So again, this is another thing. So if you're going to take care of the middle of the pyramid, microwave oven is becoming very, very common here in India too. But a lot of times we use microwave oven for just simply reheating coffee, right? But, you know, if you do it right, if you educate the consumer, you can actually use, do the 100% of your cooking with microwaves. But to be able to do that, you need to understand how does microwaves heat. For example, this is popcorn popped in the microwave. This many popcorn kernel did not pop, right? So I took this popcorn, put it in the microwave, this many popcorn kernel didn't pop. This happened to me in 1984. I took this popcorn, unpopped kernel, put it in the air popper, voila, everything popped. What does that tell me as an engineer and scientist? I took the unpopped kernels from microwave popping, put it in the air popper, all of them popped. I repeated this five times, I got similar results. What does that tell me? Some of the components are not properly exposed to microwave. Correct. Take it one step further. Take it one step, you are on the right track. Take it one step further. I did it five times, I got the same number of plus minus two or three number of popcorn kernel. So what does that tell you about microwave popping versus conventional air popping? Huh? Okay. Not really. See, microwave is just simply generating temperature. That's all it is. But in your area, heat transfer, the answer I want to give is, heat is produced. But the way the heating takes place in popcorn in a microwave is very different than heating that takes place in conventional popcorn. Yeah. Huh? The wavelength, it could be like... Water and water and water. Water molecules are rotating. You are absolutely right, miss. But because of the rotational motion of the water molecules in microwave, the way it produces heat is, it produces the heat in the inside of the kernel. In a conventional popper, the outside of the popcorn gets heated up, heats get conducted inside, and then the water molecule gets heated up. 
So since the microwave, the water gets heated up faster, if the surface is not heated up, it doesn't pop. Because when the surface is heated up, it becomes soft, it can pop. Just heating up the water inside does not enough. Outside doesn't get heated up. So one of the things we realized is, the variety of popcorn that works good in air popper is not the right variety for using in microwave. So the mechanisms of heating in microwave versus the mechanism of heating in conventional popping is different. So we need to understand the science and technology. You understand? So if you are a food product development scientist, you need that solid science to develop better product. So science is definitely is there. You need to understand, like from electrical engineering perspective, I need to know the dielectric properties. I need to know the dielectric constant. I need to know the penetration depth. I need to know the, 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 the dielectric delta. You know. So again, everything that you guys use in material science, you have to understand it in the context of a food product. The other challenges for silica is the same, but this popcorn, dielectric properties are different than this popcorn, and it varies with moisture content. Where is your protein content? Now it is like, my God, you know, fascinating. But you have to understand the, what the, the, the diversity and the, basically the challenges in terms of using engineering, using science and food products because a rose is not a rose is not a rose. Just like each rose, just because it's a rose doesn't mean the properties are the same. What impacts processes from engineering, chemical, mechanical, electrical is properties. But the properties of Alfonso mango is different than another mango. Properties of Gala apples is different than the Kashmiri apple or the Haryana apple. So you need to understand the properties. Whereas iron, if you have three person, you know, basically chrome in it, the property is the same. But tomato from this year is not a tomato from last year. The solids are different, pH is different, it will affect your processing ability. So it's a lot of challenge applying chemical engineering principle for processing of food products. So again, you know, this I'm going to skip. I just want to show you, you can read these things and you can have a discussion. If anybody is interested, I can help you with that. But again, microwave heating, microwave food product development, you need to understand electrical engineering. You need to understand the mechanical engineering. You need to understand the food microbiology. You need to understand the food chemistry to develop a successful microwavable food product. And each of those areas gives you ripe opportunities for innovation. I can develop a beautiful package to take advantage of the microwaves. I can take advantage of the properties of a material to match it in terms of the, the impedance of the food product. So if you understand what is going on, then you can come up and fine tune the intervention. So again, some new opportunities here. Again, some people have come up. Microwave by itself has advantages, disadvantages. Why not we combine microwave and conventional technology together? Then each product heats up differently in microwave. So Jap J Japanese people came up with that, a reader. So you basically bring up this product. It has the UPC code here. So you read the UPC code. Microwave oven knows what this product is. It knows what the weight is. It will come up with its own program for heating it so that you get a perfect product. Innovation. They use your electrical engineering RFID technology. They put the RFID and they know what the product is. And then they match that requirement in terms of a program for microwave heating for the product. But then it's going to cost more for that RFID in the product. If the consumer is going to buy, you never know until you consume, do a focus group and do a market test to be able to do that. Even though the consumer doesn't buy your product, I still think it's an innovative product. Just because something didn't sell, that doesn't make it non-innovative. You need sometimes 10 innovative technology to come up with one technology that will make money for a company. Companies produce 10 products, only one product makes money. So don't stop just because the first technology didn't work. You learn so much in the process. Keep applying it for the second one, third one. Then it will become a other for you. A sort of a pattern. You can't stop from being innovative. 
So here is the antenna effect to develop a package for microwave cooking and people, the electrical engineers know what I'm talking about. <coughs> Lot of application for developing processing equipment using microwaves, thawing of frozen meat, finish drying, pre-cooking and stuff. But what's important here is the electrical engineer alone develops equipment is not going to be perfect. If the food engineer or a food scientist alone develops the equipment, it's not going to be perfect. You need interdisciplinary. The electrical engineer needs to sit with the food scientist, understand, develop prototypes, makes it work. So another thing required for innovation is don't hesitate to talk to your friends about different things. There's always something you can learn from their view of looking at it. So if you look at an elephant from the front, it's going to look different from the side. It's going to look from different from the back, right? So all these problems are so big, you're only seeing a myopic view of the problem. So get collaboration. Get people from different fields to work with you. You can take care of the entire problem. Innovation is not just simply looking through your keyhole and taking care of the patch. Innovation is looking at the problem, that entirety, without disregard for how big or how small it is. So again, commercial equipment for microwave, pasteurization, sterilization, drying, and sanitizing, things of the kind. Then I talked about this innovative non-thermal technology in addition to high pressure, you have pulse electric field. It basically works like a, like, like a, a poration technology. It basically puts those high electric field pulses into the membrane, and the microorganisms die, and again, you have irradiation. The easiest one is just take UV light. UV light has germicidal effect. It can penetrate in these food products to a few millimeters. And again, these are non-heat mediated technologies. The nice thing about this, they only kill the microorganisms, but it retains all the quality factor. Using heat is a great technology for to kill microorganisms. But in addition to microorganisms, they also decrease the qualitative attributes, take away some of those chemicals responsible for the quality, texture, color, things of that kind. These non-thermal technologies will not affect the qualitative aspects of the product. They just kill the microorganisms. Okay, so here are the principles for some of these. You can look at it, read it at your leisure. And then, again, I told you, right? Packaging by itself can improve shelf life. So modified atmosphere packaging is used for apples. You can keep apples for up to nine months by putting them under different CO2 and oxygen concentration, different temperature, different relative humidity. You can keep mushrooms for up to two weeks. You control the concentration of the oxygen around it, control the relative humidity around it. So just simply packaging the product appropriately, and these are the other challenges, light absorbers, odor absorbers, microwave susceptors, and things of the kind. Plenty of opportunities. If anybody is interested, we can talk about it further. Again, I'm throwing all these opportunities out there, and all this information can be made available, accessible to you at a short notice. And again, more information, if you are interested in the food sector for your project, read up, and I can help you with it. So, <clears throat> again, like I said, basically the idea is create an environment which will not allow microorganisms to grow or the enzyme to perforate, which decreases the food quality. That's how you increase the shelf life of this food product. Okay? So it's 3 o'clock and I have time until 3.30, right? So I'm going to skip through the rest of the slides. The rest of the slides, if you guys are interested in making chocolate, these are the unit operations that you subject it to. I'm going to basically skip it through for the interest of time, but I'll be more than glad to talk to you guys about it while you're working on your next project. <coughs> Here it is. So I'm going to give you a product development project. So 
have you worked on anything in groups yet this, mo this morning? Not really, right? Okay. So, Gayatri chime in after I tell them what to do. You can choose whoever you want to work in groups. If you don't think anybody is good enough to work in, in groups with you, you can work alone. So you choose who you want to work with or you don't want to work with. Then this is the challenge I'm throwing at you. Identify a food crop that's underutilized. Food crop that either too much of production is taking place or the food crop is ripe for some particular product. And you're going to basically take care of that particular crop crop, process it and meet a unmet market need out there. There is a market ripe. So like I want jackfruit 12 months a year. I want to drink Alfonso juice. 20 years ago I didn't have Alfonso juice but now I can have Alfonso Malza juice 12 months a year. So maybe a product with chiku or product from lychee or something. Tell me what the product concept is. What are you trying to make? Tell me you have the target audience. What I'm trying to say here is if you make a lychee juice, everybody doesn't have to like it. You can say this lychee juice is for children or this lychee juice is for older people because or it is some sort of a pomegranate juice for older people because pomegranate juice has a low pH so it will prevent the urinary tract infection. So you could target a niche market when you develop a product. You don't need the product to be accepted by the entire Indian market or Indian consumers. So tell me what your niche market is, identify what the target audience, then at 325 or maybe about 320 or something, I would like you guys to quickly make a five minute presentation to the rest of the class. Does that make reasonable? You have to add, subtract something to it? At this point, I'm going to open it up just simply to make it easier for them to, because if, to come up with something for the bottom of the pyramid may be a challenge. I need to give them at least two days to come up with that. But since I'm only giving them about 30 minutes, I would say let's open it up. Let's get their brain waves rolling in terms of at least solving some problem for the consumer or the society at this point, if that's okay with you. Okay. Is the problem clear? Is the assignment clear? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, start working on it. And like I said, pick the groups. Doesn't matter how many people are in your group, but start working on it. And if you need any help, I'm here. Huh? It has to be a food crop, essentially, or... Tell me, tell me what do you have in mind? Spice. Spice is a food crop for me. Yeah, spice is a food crop. Even if you make jute, to me, for all technical purposes, jute is a food crop to me. You know why? Jute is used for making packaging material, it's a food sector. So if you want to think of it as a generic thing, let's think of it as food slash agro crop. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to walk around and see what discussion is going on, so don't be... Don't let me make you nervous. Okay, gentlemen and ladies. Looks like you're all in great shape. So, are we ready to make a presentation? Or do you need five more minutes? <clears throat> are you ready to make a presentation? Or you need five more minutes? Huh? No news is good news, that is, you're ready and you don't need to waste five minutes because I'm jaldi aapko ghar bejenge so that you can have hot cup of tea. What's the plan after this? I'm not sorry, you're supposed to take him to the lab, na? Take it. But udar chai unke liye wait kar raha hai, na? Chai is right here. Right here, okay. Can we, can we do this? After this, okay. Can they have a cup of tea while they are making the presentation? Outside. Oh, outside. Okay, take it. Then 
टेली वाटर माई फियर इज एक बार चाय पियोगे आपका पूरा आइडिया मेल्ट हो जाएगा सो so, पहले आइडिया आप, आपको डिसमिनेट कर दीजिए फिर जाके चाय पियेंगे देन यू विल लिसन टू दिस वंडरफुल पर्सन फ्रॉम टाटा केमिकल्स डॉक्टर मुरली शास्त्री ठीक है सो लेट्स डू इट रैंडम 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 नंबर एट शॉर्ट एट यू सो आप बताइए आपकी क्या आइडिया क्या एंड आप माइक वाप रही है ना लोग एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द रेस्ट ऑफ द ग्रुप लिसन टू द पर्सन एस क्वेश्चन एंड हेल्प इम to succeed oh. in the project uh, we we heard that the, there was a lot, there, there, there there was a problem in delhi and that was the uh, that was by the farmers they they burned this lot of agro waste in haryana and uh, this very very of this delhi and there, there was a big problem of this pollution so we can we can convert uh, uh, this agro waste like uh, wheat pad uh, wheat or paddy straw uh, to al alcohol and that from that alcohol we can we can okay, we can produce the biodiesel the beauty of this biodiesel is that it's 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 save the this uh, intensity of pollution intensity 30% to 40% so that's ultimately boost toward this uh, uh, pollution also and uh, this economic uh, big economic that was the that was big uh, big economic uh, per se so we can we can uh, and also for our economic for farmer per se also so uh, we we uh, we will more, we will uh, less uh, depend on the foreign import this all kind of things so i think it is uh, uh, it's a very big uh, even though this pm modi has said uh, two and three days back, uh, two, two and three years two and three months back to start such kind of uh, technology to this uh, uh, to villages area that's all great project i want at least one group to ask a question yes is any question you. regarding this because i am a mechanical student I, i don't know yeah. this how is insight is a question you could even be a statement saying use this this is a great idea this yes, is yes. what you need to do any comments i need at least one group to do that yeah anybody anybody yes, yes. you know anybody here oh uh, no no we are we are we are just planning but definitely iit bombay will uh, yes yeah yeah okay oh better huh? you have to ask you, you you know what she wanted to say right Yes, so, 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 so. <laughs> yeah. What what she meant, I think, was that uh, you all are going to be involved in this project, and uh, I don't know about the benefit. Who is going to be benefited? But who all are going to be involved? Or maybe what what do you think? What what are the people with the skill set who will be required to accomplish this part? Like yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Engineer, this sort of biomedical or some yeah, yeah, what yeah. skill set kind of thing. Definitely, chemical engineer, some uh, 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 food processing, something, and uh, chemistry also. And uh, from my uh, from uh, biotechnology, yes. So this kind of people should involve. Okay. Okay. Ah. Very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, my plan is to uh, think about the bottom part of the people in the pyramid uh, that is how to uh, substitute the uses of the plastic bags because we are using nowadays uh, uh, plastic bags in many of our uh, 
day to day use so from the banana cover fruit cover how we can make it into the products so that we can carry our uh, products to carry from market to the home like this so we can collect the fibers from the banana fruit cover then we will make it uh, some arrangement to produce the bags and pots or some that can be useful for replacement of the plastic use so this this idea is with me okay thank you any question Uh -huh. uh, one film uh -huh. uh, that may be some jute or something is required to uh, make a thin film with the composition of matrix and reinforcement so that we can do uh, this may be possible I don't know how actually so the process? I don't know. Uh -huh. so that I will uh -huh. come up with the technology. You have to think positive. And when you have one crore rupees, which is probably going to be when you leave, and give you nine months, you will come up with the technology. Uh -huh. Don't think negative. Don't think glass is half full. Always think glass is part full, but don't say glass is half full. Take glass is full, you will hire the right person to make this thing happen. All she is giving you is an idea and you can have somebody work on this project. You won't have an answer right away. But nine months looking in that direction, you will come up with an answer. So mm -hmm. think positive. Okay? Uh -huh. right. Yes, go ahead. Actually, once I visited to Rajasthan, uh -huh. and there I saw that uh, they are making uh, dress materials, sarees out of banana fiber. Okay, if sarees and dress materials can be made, then uh, uh, these. Uh, uh, the carry bags also can be made out of that material. Same technology we can adopt for this. I think so. Ten years ago, I was working with the cell phone group. They were making greeting cards out of banana plant based. Of course, they had to add other things to it to make it non bridge stuff. But my point simply is, they were able to use something that was a waste and add it into a chemical. It's just like I listened to a presentation there for instance, Pepsi imports ingredients for their products from Europe. Now they are taking food waste from India and getting free ingredients from it and they don't have to ship it from Europe and they are able to do that. So they are thinking like what I told you. You can think of food as processed foods, food processed into consumable product or you can take food as a chemical ingredient from which you can extract pectin, starch, or you can use the waste for a raw material or something else. Excellent idea. Anything else? Any other comment? Okay, great. Next is your group. Hello. Uh, actually, um, we are from the eastern part of India, and uh, our plan is the uh, um, simplest one. Um, uh, we have uh, a vegetable very common uh, in our day to day life that is uh, pointed gouts or we call it as uh, potal. Uh, so that vegetable is being wasted a lot because of his uh, huge cultivation. Okay. Uh, if we treat it as a vegetable that is uh, wasted. So we saw that during uh, the marriage parties or something uh, what we have done is we make a sweet out of it. Okay, Sweet uh, item out of it. So if we can, um, we can bring that into market, we can send it uh, uh, to the customers, then it would be helpful because that can be also preserved for uh, around uh, uh, 20 to 1 month, 20 days to 1 month. The process is very simple, you just uh, peel up the, uh, um, the vegetable skin, then, uh, then uh, make a small hole and uh, pop out all the seeds out of it then uh, put inside, uh, we call it as khua, right? Uh, 
uh, that uh, sweet item then uh, you know, some some must that um, into inside the sugar syrup so that it can be boiling as sugar syrup so that it can be preserved and uh, package it and uh, sold it in the market so this is the idea um, which can be worked upon Sweets will be costing around 5 rupees per piece. <laughs> so that we have thought. But it will be, uh, I think, mean, the cost will be actually be a uh, Yeah, because that uh, milk item which you are adding, you know, that is costly. Uh, this. Mm -hmm. Total kilo is 10 rupees. You know? So 5 rupees per piece will be profitable. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I, uh, what I was thinking is that northeastern part is like uh, plenty of uh, different kind of rices, variety of. So among them the black rice in uh, Manipur and then red and purple rice in Assam are very uh, nutritious. But I have not seen anyone having that rice. And, and whoever like uh, having low income group people, they use just that purple rice and that too by polishing up the outer uh, bran. Part. So the, the best the, the part of the rice is that the outer brown part is the nutritious and that part is removed before going to the kitchen. Animals, yeah, 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 yeah. The same thing is in Assam that uh, Assam or Manipur are like that. The, the that part goes to the, the any, as animal food and sold as around 10 to 15 rupees per kg, but which should be around 100 or 150 per kg. So can we uh, like utilize that for as a cake or for biscuits um, as a value-added food product? So that was the idea. So. It is known now orange peel oil, which is a byproduct from orange selling to cosmetics First thing is the lack of knowledge, and the second thing is that the, the rice is very hard with the brown part. So when it's polished, it becomes very soft. And so uh, that is the thing that uh, then the hard rice is difficult to cook. Even in pressure cooker, also it takes several uh, like uh, uh, minutes to uh, cook the rice. And so. Professor Anandeshwaran thinks there is a market, there will be no market. If Professor Anandeshwaran thinks there is no market, there will be a market. 
Because what I'm trying to tell you is I don't understand what's going on outside my sphere of influence. I still remember it. I was consulting in the field of microwave popcorn. One popcorn grower came and asked me, I want to sell popped corn. Not popcorn for popping, popped corn. I said, you're wasting time. Why would I want to buy popped corn? Don't be fresh. I'm glad the guy didn't listen to me. He's making good money right now in Nebraska, you know. So my point sometimes is you need to ask the right question to the right person in terms of what the market is, which is, you know, again, sort of important because when you develop the product, there should be a match between that new product and the market. And you also should have some understanding of the product. You are a Hershey company. What are you good at? The Hershey company. What do they know the best? What does Hershey company know the best? What does Cadbury's know the best? What do they know? About what product? Chocolate, right? So you now tell Cadbury's, oh, wonderful opportunity to go make a processed meat product. Does Cadbury have the strength to process those? Understand? That's my point. So you need to fit the product to your specialty, and you should also make sure there's a fit between the product and the market. Okay? With that, your group is the last group. What happened to your? Arana? Take it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Product that I uh, that we have thought of uh, is uh, from our base uh, our own experience. Uh, a crop is there in Rajasthan that is uh, bajra, and a beverage is uh, formed in household that uh, that is bajra rab, and uh, that is uh, equally nutrition uh, in both the seasons like winter and summers. Uh, while it is uh, taken as a hot beverage or it is as a cold beverage, so uh, like that. Beverage is not uh, currently in the market uh, as I searched uh, like um, right now also. So like that is a uh, um, because of high nutritional value and uh, we can make it availability uh, throughout the India because uh, Rajasthan is the largest producer of bajra and uh, like the crop is uh, um, not uh, is currently underutilized. So that can be and another that uh, we thought of is uh, uh, making uh, like cut cut out sugar cane like sliced and cut out sugar cane for uh, jaundice and uh, other different diseases in like uh, like uh, cities like Mumbai or uh, grown cities where uh, like uh, jaundice treatment can be uh, like the sugar cane the cut out sugar cane can be used for chewing and uh, uh, for teeth exercise or uh, maybe preserved for jaundice treatment and others. Excellent. Any questions for this group here? It matches with what you were thinking too, right? I mean, you were saying sugar cane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I was telling you, you know, Marat Mahaji, great for CEO of the Kenning Tree, the consumption of like we... No, no, no. That is why we felt that. That, that, uh, yeah. So, if, if a preserved sugar cane can be there, so like, it can be helpful. We grow bajra here, right? Okay. But isn't the, the, the famous. Okay, any questions for this group? I'm thinking more the. Households or like uh, like honey kind of restaurants. They are specialized restaurants which give the village environment. So in that that kind of hotels or restaurant, you will find that as a uh, welcome drink. So it uh, it is bajra rap. So bajra rap and uh, it is like uh, mix of uh, uh, buttermilk and uh, uh, bajra heated in some specific temperature or Okay, go folks, we are just five minutes over. You folks did a great job. 
and give yourself all the big applause. And again, keep thinking and think positive. <clears throat> and remember, you will have nine not so good ideas before you get that ten great ideas. This is true for anybody, any great company. Like I said, out of ten products that we introduce, only one of them sustains, but you have to have. So again, make this a habit to think out of the box. And more importantly, when you teach, students think out of the box. If you teach 30 students, there are 30 more people spreading their life. So good luck to your thanks and I enjoy it. I have a question. Yes. Uh, so like now what? We have uh, tried to uh, get a product. Right. Now, now what could be the further extent? Excellent. Excellent. Um, do you want to take that question in, in relation to what you, these people are going to do about projects and they can take some of these projects and pursue it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we encourage and welcome such ideas here at Tata Center. So if you do have ideas like these, we will share them with our speakers. We have the next uh, Dr. Murli Shastri here already. So we'll share this with our faculty. We'll share this with our team. We would like to encourage uh, faculty members from across India and students to come and work with Tata Center. We will help you um, through mentoring, through uh, the process of end-to-end -end innovation here and with your, uh, you know, respective college there. Uh, this whole, the five-day experience that you're going to have is going to talk of the various facets of end-to-end -end innovation that we um, at Tata Center work, uh, I mean, uh, typically um, include in our uh, process. So you'll, you'll probably have something else to tell us on Friday because you'll see the whole process. We'll have a fabrication session happening from tomorrow onwards for the next four days. You'll understand how to take an idea till that proof of concept stage. We'll make you go through that. Typically each one of you will go through that. And of course answer all those questions that you have. The idea may not, the idea that you're working here will not be on Bajra Rab. It will be something even more basic. But that will give you an indication of how you need to outline the whole process. After which, Tata Center IIT Bombay is ready to work with you on that. <laughs>